everybody, it's Crazy Van Gogh Sam. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we are reacting to the ninth episode. I was gonna say eighth. No, ninth episode of Bad Batch, uh, Bounty Lost. So that sort of calms down the atmosphere a little bit, but sorry for the late reaction. Um, I'm an hour late to watching this, obviously, because as you guys saw, either on the channel or on Twitter today, well, not today, but tomorrow is my mum's birthday. And unfortunately, due to COVID, we were supposed to go away for a holiday um, in here in Australia. It obviously was safe at one point to travel across different states, and we were taking her on a trip but because COVID came back, we went into lockdown and only the borders got open like literally three days ago. We were like, there's no point in waiting uh, <laughs> until there's like a chance to leave. So instead we decided to plan this whole birthday weekend for her instead. And today was amazing. It was actually really, really fun. We played mini golf. We went out, had this amazing Italian lunch, really good, good on my sister for choosing. She's really good at choosing places and had a really, really amazing time. And I'm really like, I actually really enjoyed it because like, usually I'm always rushed to come back and do reactions, but for this I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take it easy, relax a little and, you know, have a good time. And it really was a great time and I always enjoy spending time with my family. So yeah, it was really fun and my mom enjoyed it but more importantly. So that was like the main thing. But yeah, um, I'm excited for tomorrow. We're taking her up uh, also. But anyway, <laughs> let's um talk about bad batch. So obviously we were left in a massive cliffhanger. Omega was taken by Cad Bane. I was about to say some another name, which was totally wrong. Cad Bane, which obviously was a big surprise to everybody that he was in the show, but it's awesome. And yeah, Hunter was hurt. And yeah, there was a lot of stuff that happened last episode. We obviously saw Crosshair. I'm remembering it now. Like it's slowly coming back to me. Oh, Last episode definitely was one of my favorites. It's or even my favorite. I don't say that now because like I feel like every episode is getting better and better and better. It's so good. The show is absolutely amazing and it's so so good. Um and I yeah, I'm just going to shut up because we're going to watch this episode. I'm excited and I don't know if it actually means that the bounty lost or if it means like Finnick might be involved and she gets Omega or something or Bad Batch actually saves Omega. Interesting. But anyway, let's jump into this. But before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, movies, and video games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Oh, so immediately starting from where we left off. Nice. Ooh. I love this new theme that he, they've given for Cad. It's nice. Sorry, will my friends come for me? Your friends are long gone. I make sure of that. <gasps> Yeah, people were saying that she might think Hunter's dead. Oh. Your personal interest in the young clone has threatened our operation enough. Tan Wei, you will go to our abandoned facility. Oh, so they so he sort of blames the girl on the left. Once you have retrieved the genetic material needed, terminate her. What? Oh no. Please don't do that, lady. I can't remember her name. I, why are they after the kid? Because she's more valuable than we realized. What do you mean? I further analyzed Omega's genetic profile and discovered she has pure first generation DNA. Whoa. Why? Like Lord. Django Fett DNA? Our clones were created from a host named Django Fett. While our genetic structure was modified for growth, acceleration, and obedience, Omega is a pure genetic replication. How many clones like that exist? Wait! Knowledge, there's only one other. So, oh, mother, a male clone, codenamed Alpha, later referred to as Boba. Since he disappeared at the start of the war. Wait! So they're literally brother and sister. Oh, that's sick. That's so cool. Because yeah, everyone was saying there has to be a greater connection to her, and either Django Fett or Hunter. But everyone was like, of course the DNA is made from Django Fett, so obviously it has to be more of a connection to Django. But the fact that she's pure means Boba has a sister! A very much younger, younger, younger sister now. Um, Because at this point, at this point he'd be a teenager? Yeah, because he works under Darth Vader and stuff in the movies that are upcoming in the timeline. But, oh... Interesting. That's sick. That's so cool. I love that. It also makes interesting 
perspective as well. Just because, not only because it's so different in terms of personalities of Boba, like this, like especially I'm talking about Mandalorian Boba, like this hardened, like warrior. Well, warrior, yeah, like what's it called bounty hunter and you just see like you know like how much effect that this war has had on him versus omega in this uh, innocent like young girl who's with some like you know exiled clones well not exiled runaway clones they they're revealing the world to her it's just so different lifestyles and it, it sort of makes you sad and bittersweet about it and I'm sad and bittersweet because like versus Boba you know we did see in the movies as well and the way he speaks about his father as well in Clone Wars he has such respect and love for him because that's his actual father like properly so it's like it's so sad just to see that he has to watch his father die and lose sort of the same experiences that sort of Omega's getting because Omega has Literally five father figures in this show. Five? No, four. Four, well, if Crosshair comes back, five father figures, but at the moment, four. Versus Boba, who grew up with really bad bounty hunters, who fueled his thirst for revenge and wanted him to murder people. It's just, versing that, it's so interesting, but also heartbreaking. And... That makes me feel for Boba so much, especially like like this is going off track a little bit and I have to cut down the talk a little bit, but seeing what he goes through throughout the stories and then seeing him in, in Mandalorian and seeing how like, not like old he is, but more just like how much effect it's had on him and just his outlook on the world, it's just really sad comparing the two stories. So yeah, it's interesting, but oh, that's gonna be interesting if they ever meet or like if any like word gets out and he finds out. That would be really interesting. I'm excited though to see what happens. Omega, Omega, oh, Omega. Oh, oh, no! Oh. Part of the job? Prime Minister is coming for you. He's far worse than why I'm here. What does he want me for? You already know the answer. Oh no. Oh. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh Jesus. They don't muck around these guys. Oh god. Oh. Oh, bless her maker. Oh my god, it's- what the heck? It looks like a painting! Damn, oh my god! Oh! Oh! Did they catch her? Please tell me they catched her. <gasps> Yay! Is she working for someone else now? I require an update. Oh! Shit. So is she trying to actually protect her? That's interesting. Omega, you don't have to worry. You are never going back to Kamino. Promise? I promise. Okay, the theme song's playing. That's a good thing. <laughs> oh, that's a that was a good episode. Um, I think a lot of people. I'm just gonna start off by saying it. This episode was beautiful. It looked like a piece of art, especially that planet. Again, I can't remember what the planet's name was, but that was so beautiful. And that's why I thought it was the place that um Echo was um uh experimented on because of the experiments but i'm guessing it's just an abandoned lab but yeah that was messed up with the lab stuff i was like oh yuck <laughs> but it's it is interesting to have that and i think again that's what i was 
on the road saying was that a lot of people will think there's a lot of dead space in this episode in terms of like the different scenes that are there but I think it's very beautiful when films and TV shows have silent moments but with without explaining sort of like what the character is feeling um especially with that moment where you know omega does go into that experimental room and she sees like these you know those like big cylinders filled with bodies and you know they're all disfigured and ugly um and then you just see her reflection and she's like terrified like That just says everything you need to know, that she wants to get away, that she's terrified of becoming what these people in the cylinders have become. Beautiful. And that's what I love about Star Wars, especially with the animated shows. And even The Mandalorian Season 2. Season 1 was eh eh. Season 2 gotten better at doing it too. Just those silent moments of not needing any, like, like, talking or, like, anything. It's just, like, a moment and you get to, like, sort of, um, how should I say it? Um, interpret it for the way that you want to. And that's what I got from that scene, and I absolutely loved it. Oh, this episode was great on many levels. I still think the last episode was my favourite, but this one comes close, because on an emotional level, we got to be in Omega Shoes a lot of the time, and I really enjoyed that. I also loved the whole thing with <laughs> Cad Bane versus Finnick, because it's obvious that there is a rivalry, but also because we have seen this in The Mandalorian that... Um, if it was the same client that was hiring these bounty hunters, it would have even been better. But it's obvious now that Finnick is working for, I don't know that lady's name, but the lady who was sort of like in charge of Omega in the first episode. So um, it's really interesting to sort of see that in this episode, that she's the one who hired um, Finnick. And I'm, I'm trying to think of what she's actually trying to do, whether she's actually trying to do a good thing. I mean... We can see that she hates the idea of the Prime Minister taking the DNA and then destroying Omega. She definitely isn't comfortable with that. But what I'm trying to, like, what I'm trying to understand is, like, what she has in store for Omega. Like, whether it's a good thing or not. Like, are you actually trying to save her or are you actually trying to still benefit yourselves but also have a way for her to get out? I don't understand that part. So I hope we do get that unveiled in the next few episodes or in the next seasons or whatever it is well but overall again this this episode looked like such a piece of art like paintings like so beautiful like the animation and just the concept arts that we're getting from these shows are just so beautiful and I have so much appreciation and love for the artists who put so much work into these shows because it's so good. And even that fog effect, that's probably the best fog effect we've seen for a very long time. I think we've had a few episodes with fog in this season, but it's some of the best that I've ever seen. <laughs> so amazing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on this episode of The Bad Batch uh bounty lost again i really enjoyed this episode and the the fight between finnick and cad was so cool because you could see their styles like um i do love like the gunfight but the hand-to-hand combat it was so different and you see like like how they try to use their bodies as weapons as well it's so cool bounty hunters are so cool but they're also terrifying. <laughs> so it was interesting to see that and see how they fight. And But I am curious as to like what's going to happen next for the Bad Batch. Um, obviously, Finnick is going to keep chasing them. Ked Bane is going to keep chasing them. So they're going to be reoccurring characters, I think, throughout the next few episodes, but also the next few seasons. Um, I also think that... Hmm, I'm trying to think... I also just love that reunion, like, immediately Rekka just, like, embracing Omega, and then Omega just, like, nudging her head into Hunter, and Hunter just being, like, emotional. I was like, ah, my heart. And then just that emotional talk at the end was so lovely. Like, I wanted them to hug, but I was like, no, that's too soon. Maybe we'll get a hug later on in the season, hopefully. But that was just such a sweet moment where Hunter was like, I will never let you go back to Kamino. Like, I will protect you. Like... I feel like that is sort of like a pledge to look after this child. Like, again, I feel like, and dude, the fact that, again, that she's like actually like fully like, f- like pure bred, like connected to Boba Fett and to 
um, Django. Like, that's amazing. I love that. I'm not sure what the audiences are thinking, but I absolutely love that. That's sick. But also just to see, like, again, just the comparison, like, going back to what I was saying before, the comparison between Boba's story and then her having four father figures, all these men teaching her how to be a fighter, how to be good, how to be kind, but also how to kick ass. Like, that's... So cool, but also in terms of heartbreaking, in terms of, like, Boba's part of the story. But still, again, I'm so happy that, like, she's connected to Django. Like, that's actually so cool. And I cannot wait to see how else that plays out. Like, whether we see, like, Boba again, because that would be really cool. I'm not sure if we will, but I feel like that would be awesome. Because obviously, like, we haven't seen... Well, obviously we haven't. This is Bad Batch already came out this year. But, um... It would be cool to see if she survives whatever the story is going to become. I would love to see like a connection with her and Boba, whether it's like bef- like because I again I don't know the outcome of the bad match. I'm really scared because I don't want them to die because I'm getting really really attached to them. But at the same time, this is Star Wars <laughs> and it's heartbreaking. <laughs> so like I'm preparing myself to lose them and it's just it's I I I don't want to but again mental emotional preparing um and that's why I want if Omega does happen to be terminated or killed along with the bad batch or just you know gets like killed in action I would just love for them before that happens for them even if Boba doesn't know that that's his sister I would just love for them to meet have a connection, have a moment, and then that's it. But, I mean, we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm going to stop because I'm just ranting now and I'm super excited. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl out. Woo!